to audio. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. Okay, <laughs> we're live. Um, it's 10.30. Time to start this broadcast, uh, keep it moving. It's supposed to be relaxing. You guys are supposed to be able to sit back, um, listen to the broadcast, and pick up a few pieces of information. Today, solid geometry, optimization, and meshing. And this is the breakdown, and this is my, my sort of tutorial to follow through this for the next 40 minutes. Technical questions, solid geometry, meshing fundamentals, working with solid geometry, mesh like an expert, and mesh repair. Actually, what happens when it absolutely won't mesh and what you can do to dig in and repair it and additional resources. What to look for. Okay. And good. Everything is working. So far, so good. Okay. On technical questions, people will call in, and, and um, I don't know this is really made clear to the to the client base, um, but we think of ourselves as your colleagues. Uh, we won't do your work for you, but we really, you know, we're here to help out. We're here to help you become a better user. Um, but I, I, I like this one. Uh, I've never had a technical support person to tell me to go read the manual. Um, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna babysit you. And <laughs> Sort of bad about that, um, and if it's a faster way for you to learn is to actually read the manual. Manual, we'll, we'll say that, and oftentimes it is. It, the manuals on the FEMAP and NX Nastran are wonderful. Uh, they have a ton of good information. It's just sort of cracking the book, get into it. You guys also have GTAC, uh, and they're on the East Coast and the West Coast. They cover a very broad time zone, and if you have questions about how to contact GTAC, if you're unsure. Send us an email. Give us a call, and, and we'll fill you in. Our our viewpoint is that we enjoy debugging models. We, we we enjoy seeing what you guys are doing. It's fun. I mean, it's it gets us out of our rut. And so think of us as your colleagues. Um, we're here to help out. <clears throat> okay. Let's go. Let's let's actually do something here. Solid geometry and meshing fundamentals. This sounds redundant, but when you're meshing a geometric solid, you're meshing surfaces. And the surfaces are made, made up of curves and points. So that when, you're, when you think about your meshing as geometric solid, what FEMAP is doing is it's meshing individual surfaces. And you can control the mesh quality and mesh sizing, everything on surfaces. You can pick curves. You control that. You pick points. But the default is when you pick and FEMAP, mesh, solid, it sets everything for you. It sets all the mesh sizing and everything contained on that solid, on the curves and points. But it's a way to think about solid meshing uh, from the fundamentals. It's meshing surfaces first. And meshing of individual surfaces is all you need to know. And if there's problems during the meshing process or there's something you don't like, it all breaks down to that underlying meshing on these surfaces. And this is what this refers to when you have a very ugly rat's nest of these elements. You have to dig in, find the surface, find the curves, and clean it up. And that is the basis to this dealing, making better meshing. And this is what we're going to start out with. I'm going to just do something simple and show how to work with solid geometry, um, what it means to slice it up and, and master enslaving components up, and, and we'll finish up with this component right there. And uh, the magic of slaving surface together. This always struck me as a very odd terminology, master to slave, um, where it came from. And, but it's been, in the, it's been in the FEA jargon for so many years, I don't think it's ever going to change. And uh, better meshing with clever geometry operations. And that's just it. VMAP is, has a is based on the parasolid geometry kernel. It can do a lot. Okay, enough talking. 
Let's do something. Yeah, my screen's a little compressed, so I have to expand out right there. And let's start with this bracket. It's an just file. So I'm going to bring this in. And what I want to do is I want to slice this thing in half. And uh, it's, just a, it's just sort of an example file. I'm going to go to Geometry, Solid, Slice. I'll pick it. And this is the default method, and I want a better method. I'm going to go to Global Plane, and I want to slice it on the YZ. You can see the ZY right there. I'm going to go in, come here, go to the right there, go to Transparency, so I can see inside. And I lost my little slice tool. Come back here. Okay. And I want to slice it right in the middle of the, of the rib, right between those two points. So while it's in there, I'm going to hit Control-Z while it's in the box. Go to Methods, Between, and I want to go point to point. So I'm going to go right-click, Snap to Point, and I want to go between these two points right there, 50%, hit OK, and slice it. And you can see that when I sliced it, well... It, the part is not rectangle. It's not oriented in you know, a orthogonal coordinate system. It was brought in from a CAD system, and well, it was probably used for something. And it's not orthogonal, so I'm going to undo Control Z, and I could slice it, fight with it, and slice it like that. But for working with solid geometry, if you're going to slice and dice it, and do things, it's nice to have it in a regular. Cartesian coordinate system. So we made up a little tool to move solids around to align them, 3D align. And it's just a little API. We want to do it with a solid. And it's, it's quite handy. And this is where select the initial plane. I'm going to go methods, surface normal. And I'm going to turn off the come here. No plane. Uh-oh. I interrupted it. Darn, i got to start over. Well, before I get into there, let's go up here, click there. got to be careful. I'm clicking in the right place. Let's turn off transparency. Thank you. Go to 3D Align. Solids. Pick that. Okay. And this, the picking is looking for a centroid. And you guys, experienced users, have figured this out, that in the normal mode, it's looking for a centroid. But I'm going to use pick front just because it's... It just gets right in and snap to point. And I'll switch it around. And it, oh, i got to give it a hint. Go back to here and snap to point. Right there. Boom. So now what that command does is it aligns, aligns the whole solid into the correct coordinate system. Um, the sister command to this, I think of this align here, modify line, as a 2D align. It modifies it along a curve, so to speak, a line point curve surface, where this other command that we made up is aligns the whole structure. Okay. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to spend the whole day with this part here. We're almost done. So, and control Z brings up the method like that. Slices it nicely right in the middle. Now let's check the mesh size. I'm going to go to, to the tree here. Right click. Mesh size. Tet meshing. These are all the default settings. And I'm just going to use the default. But notice here what this says. Assembly multi-solid sites, multi sizing. Adjacent surface matching. Which means that if, it, if VMAP finds two surfaces that are sitting right on top of each other, they're just kissed right up, occupy the same space, so to speak, and they have the same size, more or less, it will say, hey, they're adjacent surfaces. So if it finds them, what it will do, first it removes any other slaving and adjusts the colors on it. Well, look what happens. And you guys have probably seen this and wondered. And that's what it's doing. And 
if you dig in, approach on surface. Watch this. If I pick that surface right there, this is the surface I want. See how that's inside there? See how that's light up? Matched, linked to surface, master surface. And, and why do we care? Well, what FEMAP is doing behind the scenes is that it's actually slaving the meshes. So if you mesh these two parts together, I'll just go right straight to tet mesh. It transfers the mesh. It meshes the master first and uses that same mesh on the master surface and transfers it to the slave, meshes the both parts, and then merges the nodes together. Um, sorry, oh, sorry about this. I've, I've, actually, when it's doing this, this command between the two parts, it doesn't merge the nodes together because that's the default. It doesn't merge the two solids together. So if you were to go in and that's the thing when you do these webinars and it compresses your screen, you have to figure out. You select free edge. You see that it'll pick up the free edge in the middle through there. See that right there, the sort of skip pattern? Right in the middle. So to clean that up, merge coincident nodes like that. So those are between our master and slave surface, and we'll merge them up. We'll go back to the regular quick hidden line. I know this is not that exciting. You're wondering where this is all going, but uh, this is just the first baby step of understanding the geometry and meshing and what's going on. Um, okay, so let's do let's do something different. Let's do something a little bit more complex. Okay, here we have some brackets. There are three geometry, three geometric pieces. Nothing too fancy. I can click on the highlighter, walk through the parts like that. Okay, let's see what happens if we just go straight in, right click, mesh size. Now it found adjacent surfaces right there. So it changed, it, it did the, if we go back in, it found adjacent surface matching, removed them, and adjusted the colors. And it said, yeah, I can master and slave up here. And it doesn't know what the heck to do here. And likewise, it doesn't know what to do down here. You can see that the colors, it didn't slave up. And, and that makes sense because it's, how would I want to show this? I'll just go to list geometry surface. And, um, I don't want that one. I'm going to right click and turn pick to front. I just It's a lot easier for me. And you can see that surface is continuous. And the surface underneath it is, is right there. But they occupy the same space. And you go, why doesn't it match up? Because what we want to do is just to merge these parts together. We want to have it as one assembly. Well. With that long surface, it can't match up because it's not, a, it's not the same size. So the way to get around that is that we can intersect solids. You can go to Geometry, Solid, Intersect. And I just want to do All. And what it will do is it will walk through the geometry and look for the parts that are adjacent. And it will break up the surfaces. So now let's go to Geometry Surface and watch this. See how that's broke? I'm getting two. So that surface on the bottom now, see how that's broke up? We still have three solids. We just split the surfaces. Now we can go to mesh size, tet mesh. I'll replace mesh sizing. Look at that. Now when we mesh it, it's going to do the master slave transition and we'll get perfect node to node continuity. So we just throw a mesh on it. It's like this. And that's not unusual. You get one big honking cat element across it and 
And if we were, we were saying, well, what we really want to see is we want to see two tetrahedral elements across this because we expect to put a big load out here and, and have lots of bending going on. And we really like to see two tets through the thickness. Um, well, we could say, okay, let's go back into mesh sizing. I'll just go straight to tet mesh, update mesh sizing. And say, well, I know that those those think webs are 0.25 inches thick. So to get two elements across it, I really have to do something like that, 0.125. Well, I thought that was, no, 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 no. Let's measure that. Let's go to tools, distance, right click, snap to point. And I think it's 0.5. Yeah, it's 0.5. Okay. You can tell this is not totally canned. So let's change this to 0.25. Okay. Now we're meshing. Okay, so from the outside, you'd look at this and go, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. We got two elements, two tetrahedrals, and we're going to get perfect bending results, and everybody's going to be really happy. But if we go in and look at the element here with the element tool, you're going to see that in the middle of the block, you're going to have some tetrahedrals that are going to go all the way through. I and mean, it's just sort of natural that in this sort of meshing that it's not going to respect the internal and force it to have two tetrahedrals across. It's only a surface effect. How would you say it's a pretty picture, but it's a, it's a pretty picture. It's not reality. So if we're really serious about this, this is what we could do. We could go to geometry, solid, and we could do embed. Here, i got a tricker one. Thick, thicken right here. And I'll take this, solid thicken. So I'll grab this surface, and I'll grab this surface. And I want to go in, and I want to go in 0.25, and I'm going to embed them like that. And if I wanted to do the same, I'll go, I'll go right click, previous command, and I'll do it from the back side. In, 0.25, and embed, like that. Okay. Now, before I get rushed too much, let's go in and check the mesh size. Tet meshing. And you can see it remembers this sizing. But remember, we got two surfaces here. we got two surfaces in the back. And so now it says, well, I can't find the JSON. But it's not a big deal. We go to geometry, solid, intersect. It's going to intersect the solids, break them apart so I can see that. Now watch what happens. I'll replace it. See how it sees that? Sets up the slaving relationships. Now if we mesh it, well before we get too far, what if we wanted to make different materials? And I've had this question, people say, well, how do I mesh with different materials and stuff? And I can do it from the tree, in the sense I could pick these parts, right click and do attributes. Um, I like to go into mesh, mesh control, attributes on solid. And we can make these, let's give it a new property. Aluminum, go here, load aluminum like that. So that's going to be aluminum, and then we can take these two parts here and, and steel, click on that button. So what we're doing in the database is that we're telling FEMAP that we want we're just tagging these geometric parts with attributes and say, hey, when you get ready to mesh these, mesh these parts using this property with aluminum and this part with steel. It's just, it's just a database. So then when you go right click tet mesh, it's going to mesh all the parts. 
And if we wanted to verify it, I could go into here. I'm going to do color with property. And let's modify color property. And I'll make the aluminum property color is gray, like that. And then, of course, I could go in, view rotation. No, I don't want that. I ran out of space. View visibility. And let's turn off geometry. Let's turn off node. There you go. And you know since you split the geometry, you're going to get two tetrahedrals all the way across. And of course, our last step on this is a little button. Check coincidence. No, I added this to the menu and it's tools, check, coincident notes. Select all. I like to preview it. And it's going to show where all the slave surfaces are located. Like that, you can see it's all over the place. There. And this is a fully solid assembly. It's all done. It's all merged up. It's as if you put in a perfect weld right through here. Okay. So that's that example on working with solid geometry, understanding the, the master and slave setup for what it's doing on approach on surface. Um, I'll just pick something here. Just down here. And before you use these commands, it, I, my, my advice would be read the manual a little bit. You know, when you're in here, hit F1 and bring up the online help and read a little bit what, it's, what it says. It'll, it'll reinforce the, the part. So that brings us into that surface tote match. You can't automatically pair them. I think you guys saw that. Okay. Mesh like an expert. This is, we're getting in deeper and deeper. Uh, that was sort of soft and fluffy and interesting and not so hard. This one gets a little harder. <laughs> um, and people will say, well, why do you really care about this? Uh, I just I just pull a button. I just mesh it and be done with it move on. Um, a quality mesh has a lot of attributes. People will, will say, how do you know that your stress results are accurate? And it has to do with if it looks good, it is good. Because in, in meshing, all isoparametric elements are based on shape functions. Shape functions like elements that are one by one if you're doing plate modeling. And it likes solid elements that are tetrahedrals that are one by one by one. Or if you're working with bricks, the same thing, one by one by one, because it's all, it, they're all using this Gaussian integration formula to calculate the stiffness matrix. And it's all based on when you deviate from perfection, <laughs> it starts getting a little funky and it starts getting a little fuzzy. And if you're really twisting up the elements, it's adding like rebar into your nice soft mesh. Um, these very stiff elements, these very unhappy torqued out elements will tend to concentrate stresses. It'll, it'll deviate the stress flow through the part. Uh, typically we don't worry about that so much because we mesh the holy bejesus out of things nowadays. Um, but nevertheless, you can get strange looking stresses and things pop up and um, typically oftentimes it's because you have some really nasty element buried deep and you off and, and also many times you don't find this until you're almost done with your work so it it it, it makes money it, it saves time it's good approach to spend a little effort work on your mesh make it look nice and plus People that look at your model, it's like art. They're going to appreciate it. It's sort of everybody has a little bit more confidence when they see a pretty mesh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beauty contest, um, and I know I spend an inordinate about an inordinate amount of time meshing. Uh, probably too much, but <laughs> what can I say? Okay, here is your standard. Difficult piece of geometry. Way too much. Way too much sculpturing going on here. Um, I, I'll leave. I won't say anything about the geometry. Let's just say it's very difficult. Uh, I'm going to jump in and just throw a mesh onto it. Get mesh. Hit OK. Update. I want to use point three. Make it work. Notice this, nothing here is lit up because we only have one, one geometry. We only have one solid. 
So it's not going to try to find, it's not assembly. So all this is, nothing's happening here. Now, in, in solid meshing, the sequence of operations is first, it sets all the sizing. We've done that. Then it meshes individual surfaces. When it fi finishes meshing the surfaces, it will, it will merge the nodes together along the curves, checks for, checks for continuity, everything's sealed up, and then it submits it to the solid mesher. Well, at this stage, we don't have to do a solid mesh. We can just skip all that and say, just show me the surface mesh because what's on the surface is going to be propagated down below. So if it's nasty on the surface, it's just going to be worse down below. So I just want to look at what's happening on the surface. Nice and simple. These are all these are all sort of tricks to be more efficient with your meshing. Okay. So with this default setting, we can look inside. I'm going to use the meshing toolbox. I want to look at the mesh quality. And the default is the Jacobian. And if you want to know more, there's a nice description in the manual. But I'll just tell you, it's a very good description. It's very useful. It's sort of like a one shot. And you can see we have some very torqued out elements at 0.95. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not good. Uh, these are, are not, not well formed out elements. And plus, you have in this corner, you have it's just not it's just not very aesthetically pleasing with those twist elements. So I'm gonna undo control Z and I'm I'm gonna make it better. I'm gonna clean up all this these crazy surfaces and, and the toolbox they give you tools to do that. We're gonna combine some boundary surfaces. We're gonna combine them together and make them cleaner. So I'm gonna add by curve. Here's the picker. And I'm gonna zoom what? Notice how the, it changes the color. It makes a boundary surface. It smooths it all out for better meshing. And just so we're walking along through here, clean that up. See, and I'll stop. I mean, this is a nice surface there. I'll just leave that in its place. Okay, and uh, uh, get that down there. Okay, good. And you can see in these corners, it's got this little loop here. Let's get, because what it'll do, when you pick a curve, that curve is between two surfaces. So what it's going to do, it's going to pave over and create one surface that combines the two surfaces between it. So that is, that this surface here is separate. It's not joined in to the prior. And those little hanger curves are on each of those corners. So I'm just going to walk around. And uh, yes, I have played with this geometry before more than I want to admit. Um, that's why it looks so smooth. So at this point, we could go ahead and mesh it. Um, but there's another trick I want to show because you can you can map the mesh onto this to get it to, to force it to be a, a cleaner mesh and that's under mesh, mesh control. Approach on surface again. And watch this. I'm going to pick the surfaces where I want it to be a mapped mesh. This is something new in 10.1.1. I had not this. This is just the highlight. That's been, those are the surfaces that we want to force to be better meshed. It's a map four corner. This is new in 10. 10.1.1 is that VMAP will try its darndest to, to clean up the mesh and force it to be a better, better rec linear rectangular style mesh. And you don't have to enter the points to map out the four corner. You just hit OK like that. Now I'm going to go back to model info. Like that. Ted mesh. And I got to update because I changed the surfaces. I changed when I created those new surfaces, it lost the prior. And again, I'm just going to do a surface mesh. Like that. And you can see that cleaned up, since we merged in those surfaces, it cleaned this mesh through there. And if we go into our meshing toolbox, 
and turn on the element quality, we got rid of all the nastiness. And we got a smoother mesh. And But there's still some things in here I don't like. I mean, this is, yes, maybe there's no stresses in this fillet region, but it's just not aesthetically pleasing. Um, I just don't like the way that those popped out. So this surface here is a candidate to use for this mesh control approach on surface. Actually, both these things here. And we'll use this map. And people say, well, why doesn't VMAP just go through the geometry and just hit all the surfaces with this map four corner? Well, if it does, <laughs> it'd be horrible. Um, it just doesn't work. It's You have to apply your, 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 own, your own neural network to improve it. Now, that just tells VMAP, hey, try to force a clean four-sided mesh onto it. So then let's go to mesh sizing. First, auto remesh, mesh sizing, like this, watch this, I'll just click on one, and it'll force it, that's sweet, it'll force it to go into a clean four-sided mesh. This is something they're actively, they're working very, very hard for the next release, VMAP V11, is it? they want to get all these meshing commands as much as humanly possible, so one button and you get a beautiful looking mesh on solid geometry. It, it is very, very difficult to do this. Um, okay, now people are saying, well, this is nice. All I have is a bunch of surface elements, and what I really want is a solid model. You could do this a couple. There's a dozen ways you could do it, because you've set the mesh size on this. You could go straight to mesh geometry solids from elements, if you wanted to, like that. Select all, hit OK. Mid-side nodes, boom, boom, boom. Okay, adding mid-side nodes, like that. Undo. Or you could go to delete, geometry, delete model, mesh, select all, okay. Go right back, boom, cat mesh. Now remember, all the mesh sizing, all the surfaces, everything's been set. That's in the database. Boom. You get to the same point. Like that. See how that cleaned that up? It's still the same. Now, the reason why I, on solid modeling, why I really like to work with when I'm meshing things on these solids is only on surface mesh only. Just, you know, play around, make it quick, have fun. Because if you go in the meshing toolbox and say, no, I want to leave it on and mesh sizing and auto remesh is turned on. If you click on what you know, if you do it with this, you can see what it has to do. It has to remesh this surface, think about it, and it has to remesh the whole thing. Um, it's a little slow, so this is why I like to work with surfaces. It's just a lot faster. Okay, this is take care of this quality mesh. Now mesh repair. And this is something that uh, you don't see many in, in demos on because everybody says, oh, no, we, it, our system. <laughs> but we always mesh. It's always perfect. Um, so let's go in, mesh repair, and standard bracket. I've had this around for a long time. And in my, my course notes, I actually cover this in my, my FEA course notes on repairing this. And we'll go back to model info, and we'll just run and gun. Tet mesh, hit OK. Boom. OK, to attempt has mesh seed. OK, yeah, mesh or border. OK, yeah. Um, it never hurts to read the messages. Um, it's There's good stuff buried in there. It's telling you that boundary surface, it, it can't mesh things. It, it's finding surfaces, surface 10, 13, 14 that it just can't mesh. And it tries to push its way through it, but it just can't get there because of these surfaces on there. And that's the problem. Like I said, when it's meshing, it meshes surfaces first. If it gets through all the surfaces, then it merges up. And when it merges up, it, it closes out things. So, And if I wanted to see where the holes are, I could go to View Select, Free Edge, 
and it would say that this is where those services are located. They can't seal it up. And then also VMAP, and recently I'll place these nodes here. If I turn on the selector, I can hit this and, and it'll, it'll show you where these are, this is one of the areas where it was having problems. Okay. I'm going to undo the simpler. And there's lots of ways to fix this, but if we zoom in, you can see it's just bad geometric practices. Um, the way I like to clean this up is I'll go into Geometry Solid. I'm going to explode. I'm going to explode the geometry. Let's look in the tree. Right now it's one solid. Watch this. Solid explode. Boom. Da, 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 da. Now it's all surfaces. All of them. And we can go in here and what we want to do is delete these surfaces. We want to delete and restitch. Right click, pick the front, like that. And look at that little sliver there. And I think that's just one continuous surface, yeah. And okay. And if you want to remove this thing, just click again and it goes back to normal normal mold. It took me a while to figure out that. I would sort of like, why is it? How do you get rid of that the transparency overlay? Okay. I got four. I'm going to delete them. Okay. Now I want to stitch them back together. And if I just go to Geometry Solid, da, 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 stitch, select all, use the default. It says, well, with the default stitch tolerance of 1 times e to the 6, it's not going to suck those up. Now it will tell us that. It says, well, create a connected, but it created a sheet solid. You guys see that down here? That's not what we want. We want a body. So. We can go straight back in, stitch, select all, and I'll just crank it down, point three. That is what we want. Solid 80 passes by, created solid. And look in here, you get this nice little clean. So now if we go in and tet mesh, well, oh, oh yes, we want to try again. Pressure aborted. Okay, it's still not happy about this. And it's in the same location. And that, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to go to the visibility options here. I'll turn off geometry. And that's not the problem, it's a holdover. I should have cleared out the, I should have cleared out the, <laughs> That from the prior operation, um, the nodes. And let's go into view and figure out where free edge. And this is where it's showing the hiccup down below. Meshing failed on surface 297. Uh-oh. So it's the same spot. So let me undo. Undoing solid stitch. And delete surfaces. Nope, I want to redo that. I do want to delete. Redoing delete surfaces. I still have to delete additional surfaces. They're way down here. I didn't get them on the last pick. Difficult, isn't it? I thought I had them. Hmm. Only that. 
Okay. At least this will go faster because we know one e to the six doesn't work. And I cleared out the nose. Let's go to Ted Mesh. And this is the life, actually. Five nodes caused error. This is the life oftentimes of mesh repair. And this time, you can see, this is the problem area. So it cleaned up these by stitching it together. But still it has problems closing in. And it's given us the selectors dumped in the nodes where the problem area is located here. And I can turn on the selector and see the nodes. Okay. Turn that off. So that is still a problem area. And if I go to the view select free edge, it doesn't pick it up, but you can see that you have an overlap. I'm going to hit control G. I'm going to get the notes out. You can see that how those elements are laid on top of each other. This one right here. It can't form a complete skin. That's the essence on, on solid meshing. Is it meshes the surfaces, seals around the perimeter, and then it has to form an envelope where you don't have elements crossing on top of each other. And this is what we have going on here. We have this element. I'm going to turn the selector onto element. So you guys can see that. See that element is sitting on top. This element is sitting on top of this element. That's not good. And that is why it's not meshing. So to fix that, I'm going to go to Meshing Toolbox. Turn on Auto Remesh. Mesh Sizing. I'm just going to bump up the mesh. Now that is not so good. So I'll bump up the side. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Clean that up now. And that will clean up that. And I've been working with this geometry. I know that that same feature is down below. There. That cleaned that up. Now at this point, we can see if it's going to work. Solids from elements. Ah, we still got a problem. Where is it? Down here. Okay. You can see how that element is, is hanging in there, so we can go right back to here. Like that. Bump that out. Solid from elements. Done. Like that. So that is one way to clean up a mesh. Going into the geometry, exploding it, removing bad surfaces. You can also create new surfaces. You can make new surfaces, stitch it together, so on and so forth. Okay. If you have questions on these operations and how they work, FEMAP, the online help on FEMAP, has additional resources on meshing and mesh repair. And also on my website, I have tutorials on fixing meshing and solid geometry stuff and uh, other details like this. Um, so that's it for this. We've gone into 44 minutes for this presentation. As always, if you guys have questions, you can send me an email. I do have one question. Could we have used geometry solid cleanup instead of manually, manually removing the slivers? Maybe. <laughs> um, what they're referring to is that uh, within VMAP, there's this cleanup down here. And you can pick the solid. And you can go to advance and edge heal small features. You can remove small faces. The dilemma with this is that it's like a shotgun. I've seen it. I, I've done it. It's worked. Some, but sometimes it has unintended consequences. Sometimes it rips out stuff that you want to keep. Um, that's geometry solid cleanup. That command. So I like the. I sort of like to know what's going on on a on a very deep. You know exactly what's killing me. <laughs> Selectively cut it out. 
Uh, that way I know exactly what's, what's sort of hanging on inside deep into the, to the geometry. And uh, more knowledge is a good thing if you know what's going on. Okay, that, I don't want, I don't want to drag these things on. I like to make them short, sweet. Um, for you guys that are curious about where, where you can find these, if you go to the Predictive Engineering website, Dun, 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 dun. I'm keeping these seminars under resources, tutorials, and download. Okay, it's thinking. If I click, it'll, it'll prompt me for the password. I've been here before. And now you have FEA notes, new user, and seminars. And so this is where I'm going to put this seminar as a movie, and I'll also include the PDF and some of the geometry files. Not all. Some of the geometry is proprietary, so don't be surprised if it's incomplete. Um, and Because uh, it's hard to find a good geometry. This is so dead, it's there. Um, this part here, yeah, it's just a bracket. But you can imagine this more complicated, you ain't going to see it. Um, so that's it. Please send me an email if you'd like to see it. A different other stuff. What's on the agenda for the? It's a toss up for the next one to be doing connections. Talk about how NX Nastran does connection technology between contact and glue connections, or to do hex meshing is to show how to hex mesh a, a solid. What's involved on doing a hex mesh? Because something like this, this geometry here. Uh, if I go to delete model mesh. This is really a perfect candidate to do a hex. And you go to mesh size. And of course you can't see it because it's not there. But this would be an example how I would show how to clean it up and to hex mesh it. And uh, that really is a wonderful tool for being very efficient. So it's between connections and hex meshing. I don't know which ones. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to get out of here. And you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.